that here at PESS we like to hug and kisses and welcome people, but unfortunately I have to hold myself very strongly because we can't. Um, we can, but we can't. So we are now an incorporation. So PESS now is an ink. <laughs> So we really have to follow some guidelines and some rules, even though we don't have anyone here supervising, we have to do what is right to do. So sorry for that, but hopefully once everybody gets vaccinated, we can come back to hugs and get the chairs closed and have our circle here. Uh, but that doesn't affect the way that we work. We still have the interaction. You can, we can comment and do whatever we want during the presentation. So that's the good to be back on like in, in person here. So not much going on. We don't have any events, unfortunately. Usually we have some feijoadas, some events, some move nights, but this year not is going on. Unfortunately, past kids, that is for the little ones, it's cancel as well because it's really hard to keep social distance with kids and all. And also the space that we have for the kids, they're not available anymore. But anyways, hopefully next year we have those things fixed. Till now, we're just glad we're back again. So let's hope we can keep this way and Delta doesn't cross the borders and then we can keep that way at least to the end of the year and then plan for a new year with vaccines and more people come in. So I would do a prayer. We're just few tonight. Um, and then after that, we're going to have Claudinha talk with us. And uh, pretty much that's it. We usually offer rides home, but I believe everyone have their own rides to come here. <laughs> Usually when we have more students as well, we have this room full of students and um, it's really good actually. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately borders are not open. So yes, it is what it is. So I just would like to invite you all to take a deep breath in, relax in your chair, feel your body, feel your surrounded the noises around you, the air, the atmosphere, and just surrender yourself to this moment. Let's make a deal that this moment on, until the end of this meeting, we are going to be present. We understand our lives are busy. We have our jobs, our duties, but let's take a break to leave behind those doors, those thoughts, the troubles, the worries, everything that we carry every day. We deserve this moment to look inside, to look after ourselves and to make our connection with the divine because we are divine. And take this moment to be here with friends, it's amazing. It's a great achievement, not only for our spiritual, but for our surroundings of friends to look around and see that we are not alone. We are seeking the same thing, the blessings of God. So thank you to be present in here for you, my friends, on this physical world and for those that are in the spiritual world. And just like us, are here tonight to listen, to learn, to exchange energy, and to reach out to God, our dear Father. So we thank you all for your presence. We also would like to acknowledge the legitimate tutors of this land that allow our, ourselves to call this our home, Australia. We are grateful for this land and for your presence from the past and the present, we are grateful for you. We ask as well for the mentors of this house, for your protection, for your light, for your love. And we are grateful as well for your presence here tonight, helping us with the work that will be done here. Our hearts are open. We have our ears to hear. And our hearts going to be sharing this light and this love that we are going to create here tonight. So be it.
So you guess that I'm a very technological person. <laughs> Hold on. So um, good evening, everybody. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Clara. And um, today we're going to, how many people do we have online? Four, okay, three. I can only see one. Is there a way that I can see everybody or just the one? If it's too much trouble, that's okay, that's okay. Hello, my Zalto. Okay. So um, the topic tonight, it's um, self-inquiry. And the focus of this topic is the power of meditation. And it, to me, it's a very interesting, a very interesting choice of topic. It's very powerful as well, because it's something that it's with us every moment and we take for granted. Sometimes just like we take for granted that we breathe and when you think about it, oh, you've, you've already breathed. And what most of us don't realize is that how much this is present in our lives. So to start, I wanted to bring to you a little bit of um, a little part of a text by Leon Denise. And um, if anyone doesn't know, Leon Denise is someone that brings to us, brings to us quite a number of texts that talk about spiritism, that talk about life after this one inspirational, motivational talks, uh, texts. And Lon Denise says to us in this text, I think from 1911, he says, God speaks to us through all voices that comes from infinity. He speaks to us every day through a book that is continuously written, a book that is written every day. He speaks to us about the sanctuary of our being, comes down to our heart in the silence of meditation. And the reason why I wanted to bring this to you guys is because when I came across this text, it felt so fitting to this topic tonight, and it felt very powerful to the message that we will see here. He also says, when the external noise from the material life is silenced, then the great voice is awakened and heard. This voice comes from the deepest part of the subconscious mind. And for whoever has heard some, um, some of my presentations, I very often talk about the, the unconscious mind and the subconscious mind. And um, hi, Colleen, hi, Yvonne. There it is, 1911, more than 100 years ago, Leon Denise was already bringing to us the power and the importance of actually going within, going deep. So we're going to see three main things tonight. What is? It's okay. Thank you. No? Thank you. What is? What is it for and how to do it? By the way, guys, um, I, I asked on the group, I don't know if everybody is on the group, but I asked on the group if you guys could bring on a piece of paper, uh, write down something that you noticed or that you noticed 
during meditation. Did you guys get the message? Are you on the on the pest group? No? Okay. Um, Carmen, if we have a little piece of paper for everybody. So just write down for us and don't share. You, you guys are together. Don't share with each other. Um, something that you notice or something that you have noticed. Something good, positive. And for you guys at home, you're welcome to do that exercise as well. So something that you notice or that you noticed during your meditation exercise. I'll give you a couple of minutes. And while I to do this, we're just going to go ahead. And actually, while some people are writing, the rest of us that are not writing, I want to ask you a question. What is meditation? And what is self-inquiry? Here in this room, we are two, four, six, eight adults and one child. And if we ask all of us, and if we ask 50 people, if we ask 100 people, we're going to have 50, 100, 200 different answers about what is meditation and what is self-inquiry. So I really want you to take the time, a few seconds only, and have a clear mental image, a, a clear concept, or maybe just a blurry concept, but your own understanding of what is meditation. And I brought a concept for us. It's a very little one narrow not in the sense that it should not be credit uh, or have its merit narrow in the sense that it's simple it does not encompass what it really is but i brought one for us to have as a starting point if you guys allow me so meditation can be understood as a practice that involves re relaxation of the body reduced breathing, bringing about a state of peace and tranquility to body and mind. Now, you guys don't have to agree or disagree with this concept. However, I'm going to ask you this question. On your, understand, on your own understanding of meditation, does anyone, and do, please do raise your hand, if you guys at, at home as well, does anyone have a concept, an understanding that differs greatly from this one? That is absolutely different from this one. We all have our different concepts and understanding, right? But they all, in a way or not, another, will somewhat land close together. So what is meditation for? It can be used for attention. In the just a second. No, Philip, I don't want to pitch you, but I was if you come on. So it can be a continuous focus. Like for example, uh, I don't know if you guys have all seen or heard or are familiar with that meditation that you sit in front of a candle and you just observe the flames moving around and all there is to be observed about the flames. Or you pay attention, continuous focus on a particular sound or on a particular image. It can also be used for cognitive process, such as you observe a particular mental process inside of you, thoughts or images, or you can bring about a specific problem and observe it until the problem has dissolved or has shifted around. And one of the aims, it could be to have a mental development of certain attributes, such as love, understanding, courage, knowledge, humility, the list can go on. Or it can be for attaining a higher level of illumination and consciousness. Some some of the things that medit meditation can be used for, not all of them. 
So how do you do it? How do you meditate? Again, I'm bringing here a few things. So these I got from um, a text that I was reading. And it says, the mind must, must observe the thoughts. Try not to follow them. So the mind just observes. It's like you're sitting in a train station and you're watching the trains come and go, come and go. You don't hop on the train. You just look at them. So you neither um, follow them, no, 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 nor you create emotions associated with them. So you don't wave to people in the train. You don't go and say hello. You don't interact with them. You're simply an observer. That's how the text is telling us. That's how you do. And when I said, it's interesting that I got this topic because um, almost every day I talk to people and they say to me, um, Clara, I've tried before to, to meditate. The line of work that I do is, it's very close to meditation. So they say to me, I tried before to meditate and it didn't work. I was doing the breathing correctly. I reduced my breathing. I was observing the thoughts or I was observing the physical sensations. I was feeling more of these or a lot less of that. And it still didn't work. And I kind of felt dissociation from the body or I did not feel the dissociation from the body. I was here the whole time. I didn't go on an astral journey of any sort or I didn't lose sense of time. Or after I finished my meditation, I wasn't the exactly mental state that I was when I started the meditation. So it didn't work. I don't know how to meditate. So what is it? How is it for and how to do it? right? Some of the things we've, we've kind of covered. And guys, if I heard guys saying to, I don't know to who she mentioned, I know you guys at home know, but um, feel free to, to ask questions, to interject at any time. So here's an infallible, an infallible recipe for illumination, for perfection, right? To be like the beautiful Disney princesses that my, my little daughter loves so much. Number one, five steps. Number one, if you do that, spot on, you go into a 10 illumination. Reserve some time. Find yourself a calm place. Have the right posture. Spine erect. Control your breathing. And focus your attention. And when you do that, follow this recipe. Most of us, and most of people at home, and most people not even listening to this presentation, will come close to that. Why? Why is that? Uh, so I understand 
and meditation doesn't have to have those states. I'm not sure I'm going ahead of your presentation. But for me, if I follow those guidelines, I will do everything and everything be quite my best. I won't get that new one, I won't get that. Mm -hmm. I will be stressed by the end. Yes. Yes. And always. So for me, it's a different way of connection. So today, after practicing, I kind of can sit quietly and do those things a bit more easily. But it's something that required of me, required for me for focus and pretty much practice. Like, but doesn't mean that I can make it different from your own probably be one of those people that would be on the phone to me say, it doesn't work. Meditation does not work. It's not for me. I cannot do X, Y, and Z type of um, work on myself. I cannot improve myself. If improving myself means that I have to sit quietly and meditate to be a better person, I'm doomed. Right? Because after, like I said, the breathing, the thoughts, look how many things we have to control. Look how many elements. And this, as I said, I picked these from, actually, I picked this one. No, which one? I actually picked both of them, this as well, from a text I was reading about meditation. Five steps, and you can meditate. I call this a recipe for failure. Because then what? And I'll tell you what meditation is not. It's not a, um, a system to follow, a to follow system. Sorry, it was meant to be a system to follow. <laughs> it's not a system to follow. And it's not a constant imitation constantly imitating someone else's steps, someone else's processes, someone else's techniques, you'll say nothing. It's not a concentration. And definitely, definitely, it's not controlling your thoughts. Just watching them come and go like you're sitting on a train station, quietly, peacefully. What if the train station is bloody smelly? Why would you be sitting there? You would want to run away from their place. So to me, and this is my this is my understanding. Meditation can be a source of all things. The beginning of all that it is, the end of all that it was. The possibility of what can be. It's a conscious choice between all the options. We are conscientious of the options and then we can make choices. Is the unicity of a time and bound being. Is us free from environment, from body, from time, from space. Meditation has many techniques, some of them that I have presented here. None of those are mine, by the way. The only thing that is mine here is this. Everything else has a source. Um, and at the same time, it has no technique at all. Because if you go to the doctor right now, for example, I'm in, in physical pain. And the medication that I use is not actually doing the job does the job sometimes, but right now it is not. So if I was to meditate and sit in a quiet position, sit still, I would not meditate. So the techniques are many, but if it doesn't work for you, what's the purpose? Might as well be nothing, no techniques at all. So learning how to fully experience ourselves, we acquire techniques and a strategy that goes beyond teachings of any book because they cannot be taught, only lived. So yes, the technique is that one that works for you and the one that you have developed yourself. 
So this was the more technical aspect of meditation. And what does it have to do with self-inquiry? Let's bring this to, to a more tangible context, Clara. Let's talk about our everyday life. Especially now, we live in all got here, I believe, wearing masks, not being able to kiss, hug, shake hands. It is a time where we are somewhat distanced from each other, but at the same time, close to each other, isn't it? Distant, especially for us, um, I don't know if that's the proper pronunciation in English, expatriates, expatriados. We, they're not living in our home country. <laughs> we are far away from those that we would love, especially in this moment, to be close to. And with that comes the worry of health. Am I going to see that person again? Am I going to have my hug again? Job stability, mental health stability financial security. More than ever, we are seeing young children presenting anxiety issues, stress issues. We've seen people not being able to deal with simple tasks, such as sit down with your child for five minutes and read a book. Go to the kitchen for 20 minutes and cook a meal. Allow yourself to have actually a shower without worrying about the external world. I brought this picture because I quite like, I, when I was putting this together, it came to mind straight away. Um, for those that don't know, that's uh, Tina Turner and Eros Ramazzotti. They have that song they did together many years ago. Cosi uh, de la Vita, and I think in Spanish is, uh, or in Portuguese, Cosas uh, de la vida. Anyway, so that's what they say. Things happen. Those are things of life. And yes, those things are happening. That's our life right now. And what is happening is, unfortunately, we are experiencing a process that I called the emptying of the being. We are being emptied of ourselves more than ever. Some of us reaching for the future, trying to fix what's ahead. We don't even know what's ahead, but we are so constantly worried about it that we're trying to fix from here what's there. Already thinking and being sure that what's there, it's wrong. It's not good enough. It's out of alignment. Therefore, I'm where I am, going to spend my mental capacity and energy thinking about it, trying to make it better. Or we're spending time, and I put the word rejoicing, I know it's not the, the right word, but rejoicing in the sense that we're bathing ourselves. And some of us really enjoy it. topic for another discussion, but the fact that uh, um, misery is contagious not contagious to our other people, to yourself. The word is not contagious, it's, um, what's the word, viciante? Addictive, yes. Misery is addictive. So you do rejoice in the things that happened in the past and in your guilt, in your suffering. And what happens is we forget the now, we forget to actually live, be present in the now. A few months ago, I would be pulling my hairs out like this guy in the picture to see this that is happening. I would be trying to control this, but right now, as long as any, nothing gets knocked out here, yeah, it's not my time, it's their time to be themselves. Yeah, it's dirty, whatever. You get home and clean it, wash it, sanitize the hands. But my point is, the now is more important 
then whatever I think is broken ahead or whatever I believe that I have broken in the past. We are so connected, aren't we? Our phones connect us. Look, we have three, four people. They're not physically here. We connect to them. But at the same time, we're so disconnected from each other. We spend so much time worrying about what is happening that is terrible in the world. What is terrible that could happen in the world. We spend so much time worrying about what has such and such person posted? How is my hair looking? How is my, my food gonna look on the picture? What has such and such said about such and such other person? We live in this virtual world connected that way, disconnected from things that are here now and the most elemental of them is ourselves. I know Dai has done a presentation not long ago about the difference between loneliness and solitude. But we are experiencing loneliness. We are together in our homes experiencing loneliness, but not experiencing the solitude. And the solitude, what is? What is solitude? And I can jump in in a few compress words if she wants to. It's like a meditation space. It's like when you choose, you can't really feel alone, but like take a moment for you and to think about that moment. Usually it's like by yourself. You know, it's a quiet moment where you realize things that you're done, things that you're gonna do, like you're now. So it's like more like a meditation space. Loneliness we can be years from by other people of empty, solitude is not empty. It's like, you know, or even though you're having houses of trouble, you're not empty, you're kind of there for some mm -hmm. trying to have some That's awesome. And loneliness is going to empty, even though you're surrounded. And did you see how she linked it so beautifully? Solitude to self-inquiry. So, if we're not experiencing solitude, are we experiencing and allowing ourselves the moment to self-inquire, the moment to self-question, ask, understand? Are we allowing ourselves the time to be present, being present for oneself, with oneself and in oneself is to fully be there for you. And I'm trying, I'm really trying not to be too vague. I am um, one of my clients not long ago. One of my clients not long ago caught me saying, Oh, it's something that you said last week, and I was reflecting on that, and I realized that I was being vague. And as, as much as I try to be straight to the point, it's something that, as I said, meditation can only be lived, it cannot be taught. So is solitude. What is there for you to inquire in your own time? It's for you to inquire. It has no point or no val validation for me to say, you need to go home. Die, you really, really need to go home and think about why did you use to wear those pair of glasses? Go home, miss, and think about it. So it's for us to know where is that point that we can improve ourselves. And in saying that, what we've been noticing is that there has been a rise in depression, in anxiety, in suicide, in domestic violence, in people diagnosed with, I, I have really trouble pronouncing it, um, ADHD, 
attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. Why? Because we're not taking the time to know ourselves, to take the time to be with ourselves. Who here has not heard of that little sentence? Two words, know thyself. Know thyself, know yourself. We humans are social beings. We like to be amongst others. Better if those others are like us so we can share the things we have in common. And sometimes when they're not good because then we can prove ourselves right or we can have a very healthy debate and learn. But the fact is that we are social beings. But right now, we are distancing ourselves because there has been a lack of the time to be with ourselves. We are so busy being with everybody else that the time to be with ourselves, it's not being there. So we go in opposite directions. And instead of being a group of people, with same, um, what's the word again? With common things, we are end up being a group of the same species. They're represented by a group of, oh, it's too little, sorry guys. It's just animals, a group of, a bunch of animals from different species together. And isn't it what it's been feeling like? Does it not feel like, I heard, I was talking to, um, to a client the other day and in the middle of the session she told me a horrible story that happened in her hometown in Brazil and I was thinking that's the reason I don't actually hear the news very often I choose to distance myself from those things because that's what it feels like we are so we are becoming so different we're killing each other we're fighting each other because we don't know me, when I know myself, I am a better me. And when I am a better me, I know how to respect. I know this has been said a thousand times here before. I know how to respect others. I know how to demonstrate compassion. I know how to be humble. I know how to show appreciation. Our most authentic state can only be found when we are with ourselves in the intimacy of our being. If you're not spending time with yourself, you will probably never discover who you truly are and your true essence. So if you're not spending time with yourself, who are you? So meditation doesn't have a certain, a set formula. Meditation is you being with yourself. I remember many years ago when I was, I used to work uh, across town and I was commuting home on the bus and I was sitting on the bus, the bus was full and I was looking at the window and my mind just floated away. And in that moment, I actually got a resolution in one of the issues I was having in my, in my life. And you're like, well, but you're not in a quiet place. It did not reserve the time for you. You were not sitting properly. Does it matter? Meditation you can do. I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. You can do meditation sitting on the toilet. Multitasking. The best moments of, I'll call it epiphany, but it's not the, it's the moment, I, I actually call them aha moments, those moments that hit you and you go, yes, I know now. For me, 
is when I'm in the shower, relaxing, giving myself the time to go within myself. Then I have my time to properly breathe. I have my time to meditate in the moment the ways that I believe meditation works for me, but for you, find the time, find the way, find the technique to know yourself, to discover your true essence. Guys, that is it, unless anyone has a question or um, something they would like to share. If not, could I please ask that all these papers get passed to the front? <laughs> yes, I, for, I actually forgot to, to mention. Jesus went to the desert to ask for guidance, to get himself ready for what's to come. And we call that a prayer. We call that solitude. We call that meditation. Look, is he sitting correctly? Well, in this picture, he is not. So failed. He did not follow the five, five steps. So as long as you, and again, it doesn't need to have a purpose. I'm going to meditate because I want to stop being such an angry person. No, you can simply meditate because, oh, thank you, life. Thank you, myself, for not uh, getting, not killing, so, not killing someone today. Thank you, Alex, for being so patient with Clara, uh, um, almost breaking the equipment. So it doesn't have to be a purpose. It's the time for you. That's what it is. So if you guys allow me, the reason why I asked you to write something positive that you noticed or you noticed during, during meditation is just so we see how many beautiful things or interesting things can come out of those times of solitude. I don't know who wrote it, so we can remain um, anonymous. Or not, if I cannot read this. Um, so this person noticed relaxation and a quiet mind. What a beautiful thing, a quiet mind. How much you can achieve. We call these a blank canvas. Sorry? You cannot have a quiet mind. You think you can't. You just think, girl. <laughs> um, meditation with oneself. Excellent. This person noticed nothing. Beautiful. Take that. Yes. Noticed. That's my reading. I noticed emptiness. I noticed blank. I noticed a vast infinite. Peace. Calm. Feel more relaxed. What if we could have this every day? Every day I feel more peaceful. Every day I feel more calm. Every day I feel more relaxed. I feel my body tingling. The movement of energy in my body. Real, realizations. Wow. Feel the body tingling. Feel the body moving. Feel the realizations. Who wouldn't want that? Well, if it's a good tingling, of course. <laughs> I feel more calm, relaxed. Depending on the meditation, more connected. More connected. And I bet you it's more connected to good things depending on the meditation. Chega. Porque a mamãe falou. Okay. The good sensation. Oh, 
Wow, look at this one. The good sensation of nothingness. Who said nothing could be good? The good sensation of nothingness. Go and have a chat with this person and, and find out how do you feel nothingness? And finally, difficulty to concentrate. Oh, no, no, chega. Difficulty to concentrate. Concentrate on what? Concentrate on concentrating and see what happens. Guys, so this is a message. I had something else to say and I actually forgot what there was because I did not write it down. But yes, I wanted to share something quickly. I have a couple of minutes. I'll be very quick. I was, I was talking to, to a person not long ago. I'll share two things. And it was a lady. And we were talking about meditation and hypnosis. And when we came to the topic of meditation, she said to me, that was funny. I respect but I thought it was funny. And that's why I'm bringing it to, to you guys tonight. She said, I don't do this meditation. I don't do this. This is not from God. It's not from God. So, well, we're not judging, but how is that? at the moment to be with yourself. And I'm bringing this to, to you guys because there are concepts of what meditation is. And what I'm saying is, it is the time for you. And how come the time to be with you and for you not be blessed, divine, spiritual? So through the med meditation, one of the things we can end self-inquiry observing yourself para mamãe já falou várias vezes senta aqui it's our tendencies and I was talking to, to a client and um, he was saying I asked him so how was it the process that we had done we, we actually the process we had done many weeks ago and he said well it's difficult when you start learning when you start looking at yourself and you notice, and he, he looked at the floor as to indicate the things around the floor, we consider them in fear, right? When we, we want to talk about God, we don't say, yes, God. We go, yes, God that is in heaven. So he was talking there. Yeah, it's hard to, to look at yourself, look at the things you had done in the past and the things you had lived and notice the darkness and the bad things. And I said to you, um, so how is it? He said, difficult. And I said, so do you want to go back? Do you prefer it back then when you were not looking at yourself, when you didn't know those things about you? Because if it's difficult, maybe you want to go back when it was easier and more comfortable. And his answer was, no, it's better this way. And you go, Hold on, are you telling me that difficult is better than easier? What crazy person thinks that difficult is better than easier? The type of crazy that has learned that in order to be better, it gets difficult. You have to really look. You have to really be there with what we call the darkness or the shadow or the bad side or the the times that I am ashamed of or afraid of. We really have to look at them to then get better. And we don't get that. We don't attend to that. If you're not spending time with yourself, you will probably not discover who you truly are to get better. Questions? No? So that's it for us. Thank you.
guys mind if I sit there? Okay. Because if I close my eyes, I'm afraid that something can happen. I'm not going to see. No, no. I just want to be away from the computer. Dear Father, Divine Lord, Divine Creation, life that lives in me right now, life that extends from me and towards me, such blessings I am receiving tonight, Father. Such blessings I am receiving for being where I am. For doing what I am doing. For being with those people that I am in life. In my daily doings. Thank you, life, for everything that I am presented with. Thank you for the intakes. Thank you for the things I see and for the things I yet do not. Even for my blindness. Because sometimes if I choose to be blind, it's because I might not be ready to see. But I am getting there. So I ask you, Father, divine love, consciousness, please help me in this moment to extend those blessings that I feel that I have received, that I am receiving for every single soul, spirit in need. Yeah more than I do. Those needs are so many. More that I can think of, more that I can name. But you do know, Father. Some of them are written in this box right here. But all of them are written in you. So, Father, please help us in our process of being humans. Help us, Father, to grow in our experiences, to learn, to share our learnings. To be present not only for ourselves, but to be present with ourselves. Because when that happens, I know, Father, that I am present in you and you are present in me. That I am present for you and you are present for me. For all the things that I am not expressing gratitude now in words. Help my heart, my mind, my whole body and spirit to be opened so I can vibrate every cell of my being in the symphony and the frequency that is the expression of thank you for everything that was, that is, and that is coming to be. Thank you for all these spirits that accompany us and make every moment 
possible. And help those that are walking with us. And until we meet, we all here in this physical plane meet again. Amen. Guys from Zoom, thank you. Bye bye.